Please open in your learning workbook to page 124. Let's solve a problem that uses the five steps of the process known as completing the square. All right, solve by completing the square. 9x squared minus 24x plus 11 equals 0. The first step says to verify that the variable squared coefficient is 1, and if it is not, then make it 1. Well, our variable squared coefficient is 9, which is not 1. So we need to make it 1. And the way we do that is by dividing the entire left side and the entire right side of our equation by whatever this number is. In this case, 9. So what do we get? 9x squared divided by 9 minus 24x divided by 9 plus 11 divided by 9 equals 0 divided by 9. All right, so now we can do some simplifying. This 9 and this 9 cancel to 1, so that just leaves us x squared. We can reduce this fraction. The common factor of 24 and 9 is 3. When you take out the 3, you get 8 over 3. So this could be written as minus 8 thirds x plus 11 ninths equals 0, because 0 divided by uh, 9 is 0. Okay, so that was step 1. Step 2 says, take all terms with a variable and have them on the left. All terms with no variable, move them to the right. So this term needs to move to the right-hand side. When a term changes sides, it changes signs. So we get x squared minus 8 thirds x equals negative 11 ninths. Okay. Step three, we're going to add something to this binomial in an effort to turn it into a perfect square trinomial. Now, before we do that, I want to give you just a little bit of information about how fractions work. Let's say you have a fraction like 8 thirds. The numerator tells you how many. The denominator tells you what type. So. Let's imagine we're talking about pizza. Here's a pizza, and I'm going to cut it into thirds, because eight thirds tells me that that's how many slices of pizza I'm going to have. Okay, so what I see right now is nine thirds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So since we have eight thirds in this problem, let's get rid of one of these slices of pizza. Okay, so there we go. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 thirds. When we complete the square on this, we verify that this coefficient is 1, which it is, and then we cut this in half. So we need to take 8 thirds and we need to cut it in half. So what is half of 8 thirds? Well, the answer would be 4 thirds. 1, 2, three, four would be half of the eight that we started with, because here's the other one, two, three, four. If you understand how fractions work, then you can cut eight thirds in half very easily in your head. Eight thirds cut in half would be four-thirds. Now, let's say you wanted to do this a more traditional way by literally taking the fraction eight-thirds and dividing it by two. Would you get the same answer? And you would. Eight-thirds divided by two is the same thing as eight-thirds divided by two over one. Keep change flip, you get eight-thirds times one over two. Simplify the fraction. Eight divided by two is the same as four over one. Anything times one is itself, and we get four-thirds. So there we go. We've now learned two ways to cut this in half. So now that we understand that, let's continue solving this problem. I'm going to write our last line here at the top of this column. And our job is to fill in the blanks. Okay, so here we go. First, verify the variable squared coefficient is 1. It is. Second, take this and cut it in half. 
Well, half of negative 8 thirds would be negative 4 thirds. Next, square it. What's negative 4 thirds squared? Well, that would be a negative 4 thirds times another negative 4 thirds. Negative times negative is positive. 4 times 4 is 16. 3 times 3 is 9. So 16 ninths is the number that I have to add to both sides. Okay, step four, factor your trinomial. May seem difficult with the fractions, but if you've been following my advice and putting the number here, when you cut this number in half, it actually makes it very easy. Just put your variable in front of that, put it in parentheses, and square it. Over here on the right side, when you add two fractions with the same denominator, you keep the common denominator and add your numerators. Negative 11 plus 16 is 5. So we get x minus 4 thirds, all in parentheses squared, equals 5 ninths. All right, step 5. Use the square root property to solve for x. So drop the square and the parentheses. We get x minus 4 thirds equals. On the other side, put plus or minus square root. So we get plus or minus square root of whatever was on the right-hand side, which in this case is 5 ninths. Now solve for x. This usually has two parts. Simplify the radical and move this term to the other side. Let's simplify the radical first. By the quotient rule for radicals, the square root of 5 ninths is the same thing as the square root of 5 over the square root of 9. And we know that the square root of 9 is 3. So we get x minus 4 thirds equals plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. Now move this term to the other side and we'll have what x is equal to. So we get x equals 4 thirds plus or minus the square root of 5 thirds. If you would like, you can combine these two like fractions into one fraction and write x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of 5 all divided by 3. This is an acceptable answer. This is also an acceptable answer. Now my math lab may prefer that you separate your answers with a comma. So for example, you would write 4 thirds plus the square root of 5 thirds, comma, 4 thirds minus the square root of 5 thirds. Or, using this format, 4 plus the square root of 5 all divided by 3, comma, 4 minus the square root of 5, all divided by 3. So you can see here that there are multiple ways to write your correct answer. Keep this in mind when solving problems, and always follow the directions so that your answer is in a format that is desired by the software platform you are using.